Hi everyone, let's get started talking about chapter 7. In this chapter, we're going to talk about all types of chemical reactions. So we're going to just start by talking about what are the signs of a chemical reaction. One is the type of products that you make. So if you make a gas product, then you see some kind of bubbling occurring. If you make a solid product, then you see some type of solid that's formed at the bottom of your test tube or your beaker. A solid in chemical reaction is called a precipitate. Sometimes when you run a reaction, you feel that the container becomes hotter or colder. So there's a change in the temperature of the reaction mixture. A lot of times when you run a reaction, you might see light being produced, like in the example of this glow stick. So you bent them and then the chemical reaction takes place and then you see light. Color change is very common. You'll see that when you mix two things together, all of a sudden the color of that mixture changes into something new. In the lab that goes along with this chapter, there's going to be various types of reactions that you're going to be able to observe, and you're going to see all these signs of reactions that I mentioned here. Now, before we go on and talk about the actual reactions, the first thing is we're going to write something called a chemical equation. It's basically the way we write reactions in chemistry. You're going to have something on the left, and then you're going to have something on the right. So the things on the left is what we call our reactants. And then the things on the right is what we call our product. The arrow just tells us that the reactants are being converted to product. Okay, the next thing is we put a state next to the reactants and the products. In this case, all of these guys have a G indicating that all of the species here are gases. So we have special letters for these species. If it's a gas, we put G. If it's liquid, we'd pull L. If it's solid, we would put S. And then if it's aqueous solution, we would put AQ. Keep in mind that what AQ represent is a mixture between some pure substance and water. Now, another important point about a chemical equation is that it always has to be balanced. Why is that? This is really because of the law of conservation of mass. We know that the mass of the reactants have to equal the mass of the products. The only way that that could be true is if the atoms that you have beforehand are still present after the reaction is complete. So that means that your chemical equation has to have the same number of atoms on the left and on the right. So how do we balance an equation? What we do is we insert something called stoichiometric coefficients. These are numbers that we put in front of compound or element that we have in our equation. So for example, as you'll see later, I might put 2 in front of my H2O. That means that that 2 multiplies the whole thing here, the whole H2O. It's really the same like in mathematical equation. If you see, say, 3 in parentheses times 2x plus y, it's really the same as 6x plus 3y. So that number in front is what we refer to in chemistry as coefficients. So I'm going to show you how to do this uh, using an example with the reaction that we're just looking at, which is that reaction between CH4 and O2 forming CO2 and H2O. So just a quick note here about names. CH4 is a gas that's called methane. This is something you want to remember. O2, of course, is oxygen. CO2 is carbon dioxide. And H2O gas is water vapor. How do I know the equation is balanced or unbalanced? I have to count the number of atoms that I have. In this case, I have carbon, I have oxygen, I have hydrogen. And I need to take a look at what I have on the reactant side versus what I have on the product side. So on the reactant side, I have one carbon. On the product side, I also have one carbon. So the carbons are balanced. I have the same number. For the oxygen, I have two on the reactant side. Product side, I have two right here, plus another one, I have three. For the hydrogen, I have four on the reactant side and two on the product side. So your goal in balancing is to avoid doing anything to the things that are already balanced. So in this case, I don't want to touch anything that has carbon in it because the carbon is already balanced. So what's that mean? That means that I'm not going to worry about this guy and I'm not going to worry about that guy. Those two are already balanced. So the things that are still highlighted are the ones that I can start to manipulate. Then the next thing is, which one should I deal with first? Should I go with the O2 or should I go with the H2O? This is noted here in the steps. 
you always want to balance your free elements last. In this case, your free elements is oxygen. So you want to leave this to the end. So that means the only choice is to balance H2O. So when I go back to my table right here, I have two hydrogen on the right side and four on the left side. So to balance that out, I need to multiply by two on the right side. So that means when I write the reaction out, I'm going to write two H2O. Okay, so that two is placed right here. Now, of course, when I put the two here, it impacts the hydrogen, but it also impacts the oxygen. Earlier, my oxygen on the right side was three because it's two on this side plus one on that side. But now it becomes four because I have two oxygen plus two more oxygen on this side. So I'm going to erase my three of the oxygen and then write four. Now, now that I have four oxygen, again, this one is now balanced, four and four for the hydrogen, so I don't want to touch this one either. So all I'm left is oxygen in the middle. I need to multiply it by two, so that means I'm going to put two in front of my O2. So that means then everything is balanced. So that's how you go through the balancing step. Let me do another example on balancing. So a lot of times what happens with these problems is that they don't give you the actual equation, but they'll give you the names. And this is why you have to be pretty good with nomenclature in order to recognize how to write the equation. So this one here says you have a combustion reaction. Combustion is a reaction between a compound and oxygen gas. It's a reaction between gaseous C4H10 and oxygen to form gaseous carbon dioxide and gaseous water. Write the balance equation. So in this case, we were given C4H10 gas and then reacts with oxygen, also gas, and it forms CO2, also gas, and then water, also gas. That's your unbalanced equation. And then I'm going to start with my table of reactants and products and all the atoms I have. I have carbon, I have hydrogen, I have oxygen. On the reactant side, I have four carbon, and that comes from here. And then on the product side, I only have one carbon. On the reactant side, I have 10 hydrogens from here. So I'm going to write 10. On the product side, I only have two hydrogen. On the reactant side, I have two oxygens. On the product side, two different sources of oxygen, one here, one here, so a total of three. So, so far, nobody's balanced. So let's figure out who we should work with first. So remember, the only thing you know is that you want to balance your free elements last. So don't touch this one until the end. You can start with any one of them. Let's start with carbon. So we can say that if we were to multiply the product carbon by four, then I get four on this side. So that means that's going to be balanced. So that means putting four in front of the CO2 because that's the only thing that has carbon. So now, don't touch anything with carbon. So that means that this is done and that's done. Okay, we're not gonna touch those guys anymore. We're gonna do oxygen last. So right now, the only thing we can manipulate is the H2O. So what should we do with the H2O? So the next thing I can do is hydrogen. So I need to put in five, which is gonna give me 10. So if I put five right here, that's gonna be 10 hydrogens. So that means that all the things that have hydrogen and carbon are all done. All I have left right now is oxygen. I'm going to recalculate my oxygen. My oxygen now is 13. 8 plus 5. So my question is, I have two oxygens here. I have 13 oxygens here. What should I multiply with 2 to get 13? The way you want to solve this is you always want to think about it in terms of fractions because that makes life a lot easier. So 2 times what equals 13? Well, this is fraction multiplication. I want to cancel this one, and I want to get 13, so it's 13 over 2. So that means what I need to put in my oxygen for its coefficient is 13 over 2. The problem is atoms and molecules, they don't come in fractions. Right now, my equation, I have a fractional coefficient. So that means I have to convert them into whole number coefficients. I do that by taking the whole equation and multiplying across by 2. This is what I get. 2 times 1 right here becomes 2. So 2 C4H10 gas. 2 times 13 over 2 right here becomes 13. So it's 13O2. 2 times 4 becomes 8. So 8CO2 eight gas. Then 2 times 5 becomes 
H2O. So this equation is balanced now, and it also has all the coefficients as whole numbers.